of the greats that we're seeing right now, the guys that are, who are the men, who are the guys on TV right now have come through ring of honor and the most respected of all the wrestlers had to have had had have to have had their feet at ring of honor at one point in time. Do you ever sit back and think, Jesus Christ, like, this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy. I mean, it's anybody who's anybody today. I mean, do you ever, do you ever, d does the gravity of that ever hit you? I, I talk a lot with Kerry Silken, who you still in the And I, I say this, yeah. I say this as a fan because, yeah. I, you know, you know, and this is like a fan to fan question. If you're, you know, whatever. 100% a fan, you know, guard down. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I can't, I can't hide it. You know, that's, that's part of the big, big attraction to me to Ring of Honor was that they were so good that the the groups in the early years, you know, Brian Danielson, CM Punk, Samoa Joe, <clears throat> and and all, you know, you name it, they all went on to 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 bigger platforms at some point, right? And even now this this new group that you see on AEW, you know, that are doing these these pretty big numbers, these pretty good numbers, whether it's pay-per-view, whether it's television, Adam Page. I've known Adam since 2014, nicest, most humble guy in the world. He, there's very few people that will outwork him. There are very few people that will out hustle him. He won't let you know it either. He's just kind of quiet and just kind of does his thing before you know it. He's one of the best wrestlers in the world. And he's, he's becoming a, a great talker and, you know, world champion. And, but as a fan, fan to fan, it, it blows my mind. I'll give it a, I'll give you an example um, of all the things that. I called WrestleMania weekend because I did the Ring of Honor show and I did two with WrestleCon. You know, one of the big thrills for me, I never called a low key match. And Whoa. yeah, and low key, you know, he's one of the OGs of the, of the Northeast and definitely the OG of Ring of Honor, first world champion, right? So things I was looking forward to FTR Briscoe's, Bandito, Jonathan Gresham, you name it. But that first night that I got there, I, I called Homicide, another one of the, you know, another, another one of the greats in Ring of Honor and Low Key versus versus the Briscoes. And to me, you know, as a fan, it was it was like, hell yeah, like I got finally got to call a, a match with Low Key because he, he doesn't wrestle as often and, and our paths don't cross as much. So that was really cool. And I think about, you know, Davey Richards was another one. The third day I was there on Saturday, I got to call Davey Richards. That, that's a thrill for me. Then you think of, um, you, know, you know, again, the young bucks who, who came here, Cody, Cody made ring of honor destination. Cody was a guy that came in and when everybody said he couldn't do it or that he was too big for this company or that company and why you're bringing Cody in, Cody popped our highest buy rate to that point ever, you know, Cody came in and he got people interested and he made the connection with bullet club and it helped Ring of Honor take off. And so uh, to see him succeed too, to, to hear that massive ovation that he got uh, and, and the masterful job of the commentary of just letting everybody hear it at WrestleMania, just letting everybody feel it. You know, that's pretty neat. You know, Cody, Cody might be an exception, but, you know, think about the WrestleMania card. A Ring of Honor guy wrestled Steve Austin in the main event of night one. Uh, a Ring of Honor guy in night two had had maybe one of the most fun matches I've ever seen against a guy from Jackass. <laughs> so, I, I mean, up and down the card, you know, AJ Styles, Damian Priest, another one, you name it, they most likely have come it's, to Ring It's Honor. everybody. It's yeah. literally anybody that you can, you know, you can, I mean, yeah, it's like throwing a rock in, in you know, if you throw a rock at a wrestling show, you're going to probably hit a Ring of Honor guy. <laughs> Absolutely. And so as a fan, I mean, I, I have all the, the action figures in the case behind me. You know, I have the micro brawlers. It's, it's really neat because you can, you know, you can point to almost anybody that they've released in that micro brawler set. And at this point, I've either called a match with them in it, or they've been through Ring of Honor for an extended period of time. And uh, it validates what you do. You know, every time, and it seemed like it was once a year, every time the WWE came in and swept us for talent, you knew that we had somebody in the reserve. We had an Adam Page that was going to step up. We had Damian Priest that was going to step up. We got Jay White on excursion. We knew he was going to step up. So we never worried about talent. We always knew that the, the cream would rise to the top. It might take a month or two to figure out which of the, the guys would step up to the challenge. But 
we always knew that Ring of Honor was a destination for some of the younger, hungrier talent and that we'd get some of their best years and that there was kind of an unspoken agreement that they'd make a name for themselves and then they'd either ask for more money at Ring of Honor or they would go somewhere else 